So how are we going now? Can you hear me? Oh, can I watch myself? There I am. Can I hear myself? Oh yeah. There we go. Woo! Michael, g'day, Matt, g'day. Michael, g'day, Matt. Just turn myself down. Um, as I said earlier, this is the first time I've done a live, so I could completely fuck this up. Um, and I've got a head cold to make things worse. Um, and I'm really bad at multitasking, so I think there's little pop-ups here. We can see, I can see comments come through on the phone, and they disappear pretty quickly. So if I miss a question, I'm really sorry about that, but I can get to that another time. Um, oh, okay, I can see questions here as well. Brant, good morning. Um, so to get this session rolling, how I wanted to run this, I'm celebrating one year on YouTube, and this was actually a recommendation from um, Tom. Um, who's one of my patrons, he said, great way to engage the audience is to do a live. So I thought I'd wait until we're celebrating one year. So this is the first time we're doing a live. So thank you, Tom, and thank you to all my channel patrons um, for supporting me over there. Um, good morning, Perry. <laughs> um, I know Raven said he might be joining us from Canada. So Raven, let me know if you're on. Um, I know you said you might be drinking a pint as well. So... How I wanted to break this up is in two parts. Number one, any Q&As. Um, so if anyone's got any questions for me, happy to answer them. Um, and also I thought I would share with you uh, my three um, big learnings um, since I started um, this YouTube channel. Um, so, but to get the ball rolling, this live, thanks Fred, much appreciated. <laughs> Uh, this live is brought to you by, and this is not sponsored, I have never been paid to do a video on this YouTube channel. Um, so it's brought to you by the, I think it's Marconi, Marconi, Marconi Cycling Club in New South Wales, Sydney. So they were trying to get me down there for a ride on um, the 29th of June. It's called the Remembrance Cup Cycling Classic. So if you're in Sydney, or if you're heading to Sydney on the 29th of June, it's a race around Sydney Dragway, and um, it's all about raising funds for a good cause. Um, so link to all the details below this video if you wanna check that out. And secondly, my good friends at SunGuard, um, they found out that I was doing a live today, so they've got a giveaway. Um, three, actually, three cycling, or not cycling, three sunglasses they're willing to give away. So these are the, um, the pace breakers. These are what I wear when I ride my bike. Um, so you can build these, your own custom design. Um, that's David, thanks David for this offer. Ah, oh, Pierre, <laughs> sorry mate. I'm, I'm no good at English sometimes, a lot of the time, especially when I'm a bit blocked up in the sinuses. And these are also another um, pair of sunglasses that you can um, get through SunGuard. So these like casual wear. This so is the whole range, there's a link below. Um, they're gonna be giving away three. So you just have to basically let me read this out here. Um, so it's a landing page lottery. Um, it's a competition. Just select the product you want to win, enter your email, and then um, there's a random one in 500 chance of winning that product on the spot. Um, and if you want another entry, what you can do is you can simply refer a mate by using a referral link you've been provided and you'll automatically be entered in for a second time. So thank you to Sun God for, um, for that offer. So, that's what this live is brought to you by. I'm kind of wondering if I'm looking at myself here. I kind of feel like I'm looking over here even though I'm, I feel like I'm looking straight at the camera. Let me know in the comment section if my eyes are wandering. So I thought I would start with my three big learnings or lessons um, on YouTube and then I've, I've got a bit of news I wanna share with you in this live, something that um, is, is pretty big for myself and I think it's gonna be pretty big for the channel. Um, further insights that I'm gonna be able to share. So I'll run through those, and then any questions um, that I see pop up. I've already had a question um, from one of the subscribers, how are you able to test all those beautiful road bikes? So I'll get to that shortly. So the three big uh, lessons that I have learned from being on YouTube for a year. Um, 
first of all, actually, I should tell you, I was bloody delusional when I first started this YouTube channel. So I did a, a course online um, from the US, it was $1,500 how to set up a YouTube channel and how to run it effectively, etc. And my goal when I set this YouTube channel up, and I think it was a poor goal anyway, because I don't think sub subscriber counts should be your primary goal. It should be a little bit deeper and more meaningful than that. But I thought I'd share this with you. Thank you very much, my show. Much appreciated. But that's, that's, I know who that is. You've been emailing me about a certain bike recently, which is very exciting. Um, so I wanted to get to 100,000 subscribers. How bloody stupid was I? In my first year on YouTube, that's what, I, that's what my goal was. And I'm sitting here at 13 and a half thousand, <laughs> which, which I'm really happy with. And really, I was delusional because, and it brings me probably to my first point in you know, one of my big learnings. And it's running a YouTube channel is actually a lot harder than I thought. Harder in a good way because there are a lot of challenges that come with it, but there are a lot more challenges than I thought. Everything's like a can of worms. So using editing software, um, camera equipment, learning how to color grade, learning how to frame things. Costa Rica, George, nice to have you on board, mate. <laughs> um, one of the great things about YouTube, this is like people coming up from all over the world. When you're hill climbing, what are your best gears to climb in as I always die out? <laughs> Well, I'm a little bit different because I like to climb in the heavy ring. I like big gear riding, strength training, because for me, and a lot of people argue with this, but the cycling gospel, in my opinion, is what works for you. And I tried out heavy gear riding. So I've only got a big ring on my SRAM one by, which is the bike here. And I like to push 50, 60 cadence a lot up hills because I, it helps with my cycling strength. And I found it made me a lot more powerful on the bike. So I hope that answers your question. So. Yeah, a lot, a lot of rabbit holes, um, learning how to smile all the time. When you're thinking about all the camera equipment, the lighting, is everything set up? Am I smiling or am I staring at the camera looking like a bit of a dickhead? Which, if you look at a number of my first videos, I certainly looked like a dickhead a lot. So, it was a lot harder than I thought and a lot more challenges, but I've really dived into those challenges and I've really enjoyed the challenges that have come with running a YouTube channel. Um, I think the second lesson with a YouTube channel is I've lost sight a few times. I think with YouTubers, you can get too bogged down in your analytics. How many subscribers have I got? How many views am I getting? What's the watch time? Um, what are the comments saying? I've been brought down a few times by the comments um, and th there's been a lesson in there. I think I've gotten lost in not why I personally created the YouTube channel and where I wanted to take it. And I went away recently <laughs> Pierre, thank you. Um, and, you know, it helped me put a few things into perspective as to why, I've, why I'm doing a cycling YouTube channel. And it is to promote the activity of bike riding, which I've said in previous videos. And by promoting the activity of bike riding, more people are getting into riding, more people are um, staying you know, fit and healthier, more people are riding to work, less inner city congestion, all these positive things. But I think sometimes, being a technology platform, being a social media platform, you lose sight of these things. So recently went away, read a book, really highly recommend this book, it's called Big Magic, and really taught me that the reason why I create videos is because I just love the process. I love the fact that I can reach a wider audience, so we're seeing people on this live from all over the world, which is super cool. And I just enjoy the process of, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's scripting sometimes, obviously not scripting so much in this instance because this is alive. And it's putting it all together in an editing package with music, just that whole process. You know, whether the videos get a thousand views or a hundred thousand views, I'm not overly fussed. I say that now, sometimes I get trapped. I'm not overly fussed because I just enjoy the process of making videos and I enjoy the outcome of those videos because they inspire some people to ride, they inspire some people to make the right purchasing decision and that's super cool in itself. So thank you all for watching my videos and supporting my channel, greatly appreciate it. And the third big lesson, this is the last one before I'll get to some Q&As, and that is surrounding mental health. So when I started this channel, probably about 
Thank you very much, AJ, Kate. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, when I first started this channel, probably about two or three months in, I partnered with um, the Knights of Suburbia, Love Me, Love You Foundation, and that really opened my eyes to mental health. Luckily, you know, I've suffered from you know, some down times in my life. I think we all have, um, you know, anxiety and certain things, stress with work, but um, I've never been depressed myself and I've never really been, my eyes have never been really opened to what an issue it's, it has become in society, particularly in Australia. So, yeah, opening my eyes to mental health and more awareness, more conversations surrounding mental health. In Australia, the statistics are roughly, you know, nine people commit suicide every single day. You know, we've got a small population here of about 25 million people. Seven of them are men, which is really scary. And in addition to that, you know, there's an extra 25, 35 people that try and take their own life. So I think um, having conversa more conversations, um, I actually went for a ride with one of my subscribers recently up in the Sunshine Coast. Um, Peter Luttrell, and what, what do we got here? Uh, I'll get to that question, it's a big question there. Um, and he, um, he works in the mines in northern, um, northern Queensland, and they have a lot of issues with people um, you know, being depressed, working in the mines, you're in a bloke environment, it's not okay necessarily, or the traditional way, it's not okay to talk about your feelings. He's had, he's had a number of conversations. He's, he now represents Knights of Suburbia and he's had a number of conversations in the mines and he knows it's had an impact on a number of occasions. So I think just my awareness, a learning through running this YouTube, which has been fantastic around mental health and having a conversation with, with people about it because you just never know where that conversation will lead and what impact it might have. So they're my three big learnings. We've been going now for 12 minutes. so. We should be wrapping it up pretty soon. Um, now, the big bit of news before I get to the question. I've decided to become a psych and I'm going to start the process in July. I'm going to become a level one cycling coach. Um, the reason for that, and this sort of came out of nowhere, I never really anticipated. I've made some videos recently on how to improve your cycling performance. I'm not a coach. I've been coached for two or three years. Um, but I really enjoy making those videos and they've had a lot of reach and I feel to add further credibility to the way I deliver them, um, some further insights and tips that I can share through the learning process. I think it's a great, um, great for my own personal development and also great um, for the YouTube channel because not only can I have more credibility when I'm talking about training, um, but also there'll be further insights that I'll be able to share through my learning process. So that's a big bit of news. Um, finally, the question, so I'll start with the necromonger -mong or something like that. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm fucking up a lot of things here. The writing is really small on the screen when I see it come through here and I can see it over here now, so I'm going to try and get to them um, in a succinct manner before we wrap up this live. And we've got 25 people, it's pretty amazing. I, was, I said to my wife, maybe I get 100 people on the live tomorrow, but she does a lot of Facebook live. She said, no, no chance you're getting 100. <laughs> so I was a bit delusional there as well. Um, so how are you able to test and get access to all those beautiful bikes? That was the question, brother. So I was fortunate enough before I started this YouTube channel, I run a company in addition to doing this YouTube channel called Bike Chaser. It's an online marketplace for bikes. And over there we write a lot of content and we do a lot of reviews and I had access or dealings with a number of bike brands. Before I started this YouTube channel, I had relationships with Specialized as an example. So when new bikes are made available like the Venge or like the Tarmac um, and particularly Specialized are really good like this, I'll reach out to them and I'll say, can I test ride the new bike and I'll do a review on the channel and they say, no worries. So none of those reviews have ever been paid, it just means that I get... Um, to test ride those bikes, which is pretty cool in itself. Specialized said, here is the Venge for three weeks. That, that's just awesome in itself. Now the review process, that video hit 100,000 views uh, the other day, by the way, the Tarmac versus the Venge review. That review took me a long time to put together, like days of research, like had to do multiple shoots of the edit, but once it's, you know, that is an asset in itself for the channel, so that's why we've had so much 
I've had a lot of growth in that video. A lot of subscribers have come on board through those videos. So it's a real win-win situation for me, the audience, and also the bike brand. Um, so that's how I get my hands on the beautiful bikes. I also have to be a little bit professionally, professionally annoying with these bike brands because it's hard to get them. So constantly following up, I'll see this new bike's come out. Can I get access to it? Can I get access to it? Et cetera. Okay, so I'll see if I've got some questions over here I can look at. Any tips to better drill for cornering on races? Okay, so this is a good one actually. So we, um, I put together an online course recently with my cycling coach. So it wasn't really for YouTube because it's 10 video tutorials all lined up in a sequence, step-by-step -step approach to take your road cycling to the next level. In that, a big component of that course is skills, which a lot of people don't so much focus on. You normally buy a bike and you walk straight out the door. Um, and then learning basic fundamental handling skills tends to be lost. It was for me. I didn't learn these skills until roughly five years into my road cycling journey. So one way you can better corner is learn to ride no hands. Take your hands off the handlebar and just learn to ride. You might start with one and then slowly move to two. And then as you improve your ability to ride, learn to ride with no hands, start to move the bike, corner it, like just ever so slightly, just with your legs, with your hips, turning your hips, as opposed to a lot of people use too much of their upper body when they corner. So that is a great skill. Learn to ride no hands first. Do it in a, don't do it on a highway. Do it in a you know, quiet environment. And just get a good feel for the bike. And you will find, practice that for a month, your cornering in criteriums or whatever it might be will improve significantly. So let's have a look what else have we got here. Is the Strava what um, estimates accurate? I don't know. I'm not a big user of Strava, believe it or not. Um, only because I spend so much of my time working in apps and technology. Like I fry my brain, like editing a video, like I'm staring at a screen for like hours. And I use Instagram a little bit, use YouTube a lot. So Strava is just one of those things that I don't use a lot. However, the power meter that I recommend, and this is only because I have used Quark power meters. SRAM aren't sponsoring this. I've used them before I had a relationship with SRAM. Um, sorry, I was just about to lose. I'm, this is chewed through pretty much all my battery on my phone. This is unbelievable. Um, so Quarks have worked really well for me over the years. So, so see what else we got here. Um, I like to get behind the saddle when cornering. That's a good one. What's your final verdict on the altitude tent? My final verdict on the altitude tent was like blood tests don't lie. And I had a significant increase in my hematocrit and hemoglobin. And I felt really good. Now, the problem is when I did it, I was packing up and leaving. It was a really silly time to do it. Stupid. Packing up Melbourne and leaving to come up here. And I didn't really have a great opportunity. Sunshine Coast versus Melbourne. Great question. We're going to create a video on that one, actually, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, the short questions work really well for me here on the mobile phone as well, just as an FYI. Um, I've lost track of where I was. What question was I answering? Ah, yeah, the altitude tent. This is, I've got a head cold. Um, I felt really good on the bike, but I didn't have a lot of opportunities to race. Then we came up here and I didn't race at all. I did one race, crashed my bike, and I haven't raced ever since. So I'm going to have a, um, I'm going to have a, a, goal, a new goal coming up shortly. I'm going to start training for it, which I'm going to share with you, and hopefully some more insights to share on that. Melbourne versus Sunshine Coast Cycling. Melbourne cycling scene is Seriously, I don't think you can beat it. It's unbelievable. The bunch rides, the crit racing, the road racing, the scene is so cool. But up here, the riding is just, I can go right, I can go, I can go hills, 
I can go left, I can go flat, I can go over the highway, I can go beautiful rolling terrain with no cars. The infrastructure, the bike lanes in the Sunshine Coast are really more cycling story style videos, please. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Um, actually, the next video, a couple of next videos I've got coming from you. So better to ride here, but better seen in Melbourne. Um, my wife tried carbon wheels for the first time yesterday. So we shot a video of her trialing the MV 6.7s. She's gone from an alloy clincher to MV 6.7s. So her first experience on carbon wheels. Um, we did a other video, but she's about to go away for two weeks. I did a few videos with my wife. Um, I'm explaining training zones to her. That's actually quite a funny video. She, can, she actually drops a fart in that video while I'm explaining to her training zones. <laughs> and then she started yawning. It was quite an amusing one. Um, which power meter would, or electronic shifting? I've gone back from um, electronic shifting to mechanical because like, I, I don't really find it, there's a huge difference. Yes, it's a little bit smoother. Um, they stay in gear, in line with your gears a little bit better with electronic, but it's not massive and it's, it's cheaper. And like, I've charged so many things on my bike these days with cameras. I've got to charge multiple cameras these days to not have to worry or think about charging something else. It's just good for my sanity. How many kilometers a week should you be doing to be a competitive A-grade crits. Oh, well, I was, I was competitive before I left Melbourne and I was doing in between eight to 10 hours a week. And I built a pretty solid base. I think I over-indexed on base training um, and not enough high intensity stuff. To be competitive in A-grade, you need to do really hardcore high intensity stuff, stuff that you wouldn't typically do. You gotta take your high intensity stuff to the next level. For example, I was doing a, uh, once a week on the indoor trainer, um, I was doing something called the two-man break, which is like three reps of nine sets of one-minute efforts on off. And that was seriously, I'd never done anything that hard in my entire life on an indoor trainer, and I started to do that. So you just have to start doing more high-intensity stuff and bust your ass off, essentially. That's if you want to be competitive in A-grade. Um, what have we got here? This versus rim brakes. Um, I had so many issues with the rim brakes that I had on my all, no sorry, on the disc brakes I had on all the bikes that I tested and I was a little bit against them. And then on the chapter two, if you haven't, you may have seen me riding around on that a fair bit. That's got disc brakes and I've had no issues with that in six months time. So for braking performance, particularly in the wet, but even overall, people say like it's mainly in the wet. I disagree. When I'm hitting a roundabout and a car comes out of nowhere and I need to hit the brakes hard, you notice massively on disc. However, so my wife, for example, we have the opportunity to go her disc versus rim. She hates things when they don't work properly. She doesn't want to go get them fixed. Except, you know, she really irritates her. So I said, look, let's just stick with rim brakes for your own sanity. So it really, really just depends on the situation, but definitely for, and she's doing triathlons as well, by the way, that's like her goal. If you're doing crit racing um, and things like that, I think disc brakes all the way. How many kilometers a week should you be doing capino grade? What issues with the discs? The, uh, the discs were mainly noise, the clanging, like the meat cleaver sound. It's like bloody irritating, the clang, 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 clang. Um, and a little bit of rub. So you don't want to be in a race and you think your brakes are rubbing. That would really, really get to you. So that's my one hesitation. But as I said, with the chapter two, chapter two I've got SRAM Force disc on here. I've had no issue whatsoever. However, on the Venge that I tested um, and uh, all the other, any, any other bike I've tested, um, the O2, the O2 had massive issues with um, clanging, I actually had to give it back and then I couldn't complete the full review on that bike, so that's what happened there. So, I think I've missed a few questions here. Um, but I might leave it at that because my, um, my phone's about to die. It was about 90% before I started this and I just got a 20% warning quite a while ago now. And we've been going for 25 minutes. So I'll conclude 
What's a good regiment to write? How many days on and off rest? Okay, so I'll finish with that question. Um, my NZ brother, you know I'm half Kiwi, my mum's a Kiwi. So what is the fastest you have ever gone? <laughs> Another good question, not very fast actually, a bit of a wimp downhill, probably 90, around 90, maybe just a touch over. Um, a good regiment is a tiered structure. This is high level, right? So if you've got 10 hours a week to train, what you wanna do is you wanna do 10 hours in week three and you wanna do eight hours in week two and six hours in week one and build. And then you go back pretty much to week one and week four and then you build again. It's like a step ladder. You're going up and down, up and down. And you wanna start with building base first, get a good base foundation, make sure you've got limited cardio drift and then you wanna start implementing efforts. Um, so I can't get into too much detail on that in this video, but perhaps that's a good suggestion, a good idea for future video content on this channel. 46 people, 47 people on this live now. That's awesome. I just wanna thank everyone for your support. Running, doing a YouTube channel and having people supporting your efforts is massive. Um, the positive comments, Eric, how are you, mate? <laughs> um, having your support, the positive comments, um, it really, it, it means a lot. Um, so more live Q and A, this has been great. Okay, so that's another thing. So in the comment section below, thumbs up. Those sort of things help me. Maybe we could do this, like I don't do this like, you know, every week, but maybe once a quarter, once a month, something like that. I can just give you an update on what's going on the channel. You can ask me some questions. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thanks for joining. Much appreciated, and I'll catch you all in the next video. So how do I turn this thing off now? <laughs> I normally just turn it off, but now I can't. Cheers, cheers guys.